everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me one quick favor, see that little black subscribe button on the bottom of your screen. Go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Really does help this channel grow, my audience grow, and I appreciate it more than you know. Also, quick thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet $50 on any game. Get up to $1,111 in free bets, courtesy of the Betfred Sportsbook. Thank you again. Now, here is the video that you came here for. I don't think you guys and girls need me to tell you where we are going to start today's Aerator Sports Podcast. We're going to start with what was one of the most hyped games of week one of the college football season. We are going to start with what was certainly one of the most entertaining games of week one of the college football season. And we're going to start with what I think many deem to be one of the biggest upsets of week one of the college football season. Although if you listen to this show, you know that I did not believe that this was an upset at all. I am, of course, talking about Fort Worth, Texas, Saturday, big noon kickoff. Fox, Gus, Joel, Jenny Klatt are in town to see the reigning national runners up, the TCU Horn Frogs, take on Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and Colorado in Coach Prime's debut as a Power 5 head coach. Well, after months of debate and argument and how Coach Prime does it, and he's too honest, he's too blunt, he's too this, he's too that, how is it actually going to look when it takes the field? Well, to be honest, it looked a lot like Jackson State. Coach Prime's team was the better prepared team. Shador Sanders was the best quarterback on the field. Travis Hunter was the best player on the field. And in Coach Prime's Colorado debut, the Colorado Buffaloes pulled off the 45-42 to 42 upset. You know what time it is, baby. It is prime time. That is right. By the way, we're selling these t-shirts, AeroTorresOnline.com, link in the show description. If you're watching on YouTube, you saw the shirt. If not, they are fire. Primetime is here, baby, and it is great. But listen, let me let me even start by saying this. I, I Before we get into all the who, what, when, where, why, I can't take that much credit. I did think Colorado was underrated. I didn't understand why people didn't think it was going to be competitive, but I did not see an outright win coming for Colorado. I think the final score I said was 42 to 34. TCU would win. Colorado would cover. Colorado was so, so, so much more than what even I think even the, 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 the biggest believers like myself could have expected. Let's start with the positives. <laughs> and I, there are so many. Um, and, and let's start with them. Okay. So, so first off, Travis Hunter on Saturday just put together what I would deem to be one of the single greatest college football individual performances that I've ever seen, especially for a non-quarterback. As I'm recording, I don't have the exact number of plays that he was on the field, but in 100-plus degrees in Texas, he was essentially the single best player on the field every single snap of the game. Played both sides of the football and was dynamic playing both sides of the football, finishing the game, uh, as a wide receiver, 11 catches for 119 yards. He also, by the way, had one of the best interceptions I maybe have ever seen where it looked like the, I think it was a running back wide open in the flats. He comes out of nowhere, picks it off, reads the quarterback's eyes. So an interception, uh, uh, you know, 119 yards receiving 11 catches. And here's the crazy part. A couple plays went against him. He had an incredible touchdown catch that was eventually overturned because he was kind of didn't have complete control when he came to the ground. And then there were another one or two big plays where the ball just kind of slipped through his hands. Coach Prime said it at halftime. He said, if he makes those two plays, he, it, the Heisman is chilling at his house. By the way, late in the game, there was another interception where he jumped the route, had the ball in his hands, and he dropped it. So I bring it up to say one of the most incredible performances, 100 plus 10 degree heat on the field in Texas. And after the game, what did he say? He said, I feel fine. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to play a couple more snaps. So unbelievable performance from him. And it's funny because Coach Prime, like I said, did say at halftime, he said uh, something to the effect of uh, he's chilling at home with the Heisman if he makes those two plays. Well, guess what, Coach Prime? Uh, Travis Hunter is very much the Heisman favorite coming out of week one. Uh, the one thing I would say, though, if Travis Hunter isn't the favorite coming out of week one, it is because Shador Sanders at quarterback just had one of the most incredible week one performances that we have seen in quite some time. And what I will say about Shador, I think a couple things about him can be true. I was higher on him than just about anybody. I think for people who didn't do their homework, and we're going to talk about you guys and girls later. For the people who didn't do their homework, they sat there and said, oh, he's the coach's son. He played at the FCS level. He played at Jackson State. He played at an HBCU. You know what I said? 
I said HBCU, high school, middle school, Pop Warner, whatever. One, he was offered by Alabama coming out of high school, so you know he's pretty good. But to the point that I was about to make, and I tripped over my own words, I don't care if it's high school, junior college, Pop Warner, whatever. Last year, he completed 70% of his passes, 40 touchdowns. I think it was six interceptions. You do that at any level of college football, that's going to translate because it means you are accurate, you are poised, you are smart with the football, you take care of it. And that was exactly what we saw on the field on Saturday. I don't, I, I mean, I remember an overthrow or two but I don't really remember a moment where the moment looked too big for Shador Sanders. He looked confused. He looked lost. He looked whatever. He was in complete control of the game where I give him credit. I think he kind of knows the offensive line is a work in progress. And as Gus and Joel mentioned on the broadcast, like he gets the ball out quick. Tom Brady is, is a, is a mentor, if you will, of his, what was Tom Brady great at getting rid of the football quick, 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 quick passes. That's exactly what he did. Uh, and he just finished with an unbelievable game. Over 500 yards passing. I saw this stat. It was kind of mind-blowing. Um, last year, and they mentioned this on the broadcast, last year, as over the course of the season, over the course of 12 games, Colorado had two receivers have over 100 yards in a single game. Two separate instances where a receiver went over 100 yards. They had four guys do it on Saturday. Travis Hunter had 119 yards, as I said. Xavier Weaver had 118 yards. Jimmy Horn had 117 yards. Dylan Edwards, six catches, 135 yards, which brings us to Dylan Edwards. And I got to say, listen, I'm far from a recruiting expert, but if you listen to this show, we discussed him back in December and January. He was the first big player to really flip and commit to Coach Prime that didn't come from Jackson State, right? So so Shador came with him right away, was at that opening press conference. We knew Travis Hunter was coming. We knew eventually Shiloh Sanders, Coach Prime's other son, the defensive back, was going to come as well. But Dylan Edwards was the first big-time recruit who flipped to play for Coach Prime. Now, he's actually, ironically, originally from the Dallas area, played for Coach Prime as a kid, ended up moving out of the area, but once Coach Prime got that FBS Power 5 head coaching job, he said, I'm coming, and he delivered in a big way. Five catches, as I said, 135 yards and three touchdowns. And so, listen, it's early, but when we do these preseason or, or, or these, these early season in Heisman polls, those three might be number one, two, and three right now. Respect to Sam Hartman, respect to Caleb Williams, but nobody's had a better game than Travis Hunter. If anybody did, it's Shador Sanders and Dylan Edwards is right behind. Colorado gets the win. Those three stand out. Um, and before we get to the big picture stuff, here's the kind of crazy part. I don't think they were perfect. And I think that they have very much flaws that they overcame in this game. It was interesting to me because over the course of this off season, a lot of the talk was about the offensive line and was about the defense. And so I'm not going to sit here and say they were perfect. They're unbeatable. They're winning a national championship. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying though, is that, I feel like they have figured out ways around some of their issues. One on the offensive side, as I said, the O-line isn't great, but Shador gets it out quick. They have dudes that can make plays with the ball defensively. Listen, they don't have a lot of bodies, but I'll say this. First of all, they're not going to be playing in 110 degree heat in Texas very often. It's going to get pretty cold by, uh, you know, by mid October, November, December uh, in, in Colorado. And so I bring it up because, I don't think the depth is going to be maybe as much of an issue down the road, even as it was today on Saturday against TCU in that oppressive heat. So those are my thoughts. And let me just add two more before we get out of here. One couple big picture thoughts. The first one, if you're a fan of college football, if you follow coach prime, whatever, be careful the media you listen to, because the one thing I'll say is this, listen, did I, did I predict that Colorado was beating TCU on, on Saturday? I did not. But did I think it, they could keep it close? I did, and it was for a pretty simple reason. I said, look at the roster that's here. I said, Shador Sanders, as I said, was offered by Alabama coming out of high school. He is not the Colorado quarterback because he's the coach's son. He's the Colorado quarterback because he's really good, and he happens to be the coach's son as I smack my mic there. Um, Dylan Edwards was basically a fringe five-star kid that could have gone to Notre Dame, flipped and went to Colorado. Travis Hunter was the number one player in America, could have gone anywhere, chose to go play for Coach Prime, first at Jackson State, then at Colorado. 
some of the, the, the other players, the skill position players, Jimmy Horn had, as I said, over a hundred yards catching on 11 grabs on Saturday afternoon. He was coveted by Texas A&M, Penn State, you name it, in the portal. Uh, some of the other players, some of the guys didn't even play. You know, Cormani McLean, five-star, barely even played. And so I never understood this notion of like, oh, Colorado's going to be terrible this year. Why? USC had a first-year head coach last year. Granted, they had Caleb Williams. They went 11-1 and in the regular season. I'm not saying that Shador is quite Caleb Williams. I don't think he's that far behind. But... Outside of Caleb Williams, what is all that different about what was inherited at USC? The situation wasn't that much better. Oh, by the way, LSU, Brian Kelly. Everybody knows I'm a huge Brian Kelly guy. Brian Kelly inherited a roster with 39 scholarship players at LSU. Don't tell me what LSU can be. Don't tell me what they were in 2019. The situation that Brian Kelly inherited at LSU, I'm not saying it was as bad as Coach Prime. But what I am saying is it was a lot worse than people give it credit for. They won 10 games last year, including a bowl game and beat Alabama. Oh, by the way. You know who's the best example of what you can do in one off season if you know what you're doing? TCU, which fired Gary Patterson and then played for a national championship last year in year one under Sonny Dykes. So I'm I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I picked Colorado to win this game or I think they're going 12 and 0. But the idea that they couldn't be respectable this year, give me a freaking break. Finally, let me say this. When it comes to coach Prime, I have been telling you for months Put aside the bluster, put aside the quotes, put aside the videos that you see. This dude can coach ball. He's had success everywhere, but most importantly, the last couple of years at Jackson State, 23 and three as a head coach. I'll go back to what I said about Shador Sanders. I said with Shador, I said, if you can complete 70% of your passes, 40 touchdowns, five interceptions, I don't care what level you're at, you're a baller. Well, it's the same with a coach. You go 23 and three, I don't care what level you're at. It means that you're well prepared. You're you're, you're 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 you have a good staff. You have good players. You can recruit well. You can do the things needed to win at any level of football, and that's exactly what Coach Prime proved on Saturday. I don't care if you don't like how he went about doing things. I don't care if you like that he sent a bunch of guys to the portal, whether they wanted to or not. This is big boy college football. Things have changed, and as I said, what Coach Prime did, it's the same thing that Lincoln Riley did when he got to USC. It's the same thing that, uh, frankly, Nick Saban and Kirby Smart do at the end of every season. Tell a couple players, hey, you're probably not good enough. The difference is Colorado had a lot more players that simply weren't good enough, had a lot of guys that felt like they were entitled. And unlike Nick Saban, unlike Kirby Smart, unlike any coach in college football, Coach Prime always has a camera in front of his face and, and advertises it. What The difference between what Coach Prime does and what everybody else does, it's just that he has a camera in front of his face. And so I never bought this narrative that they couldn't be good. And I never bought this narrative that Coach Prime isn't really good. Now, to be blunt, to be fair, is this uh, there's still a lot of steps, right? We know, and even the, the, the biggest Coach Prime believer, and I think I'm one of them, they'll tell you there's still work to be done. This isn't a national championship caliber roster, and that's okay. It's year one. This isn't even probably a Pac 12 caliber championship caliber roster in year one, and that's okay. But all of a sudden, you look at that schedule. I don't think they're beating Oregon at Oregon in week four. They play USC the following week at home, and they end the season at Utah. But other than that, show me the games that they can't win, okay? I'm not saying they will win all of them, but Nebraska next week at home? Did you watch Nebraska on on, on Thursday night? They can't move the football. Jeff Sims, Jeff Sims, I don't want to disrespect the kid. I think Colorado, Colorado, by the way, was an underdog. I expect them to be the favorite by the time the game kicks off. Colorado State, even somebody like USC, I don't necessarily think they'll beat USC, but they can't go score for score with USC the way their defense looked last week in week one against San Jose State. Stanford should be a win. Arizona is going to be interesting. Washington State can be a win. Oregon, I just go on to say, you look at every game on their schedule. I think Utah and Oregon are probably a little too physical for him. And I think Caleb Williams is the only quarterback that's definitively better than Shador Sanders. So I bring it up to say, Coach Prime told you. He said, we're coming. Well, they're here. uh, And I am so excited to continue to watch this team. As I said, you know what time it is? It is prime time, baby. Grab your gear. Shout out to Coach Prime. I am so impressed with this group. 
cannot believe how good they looked. And I'm so fired up because we knew this could potentially happen. And it's exactly what happened on Saturday.